Um, yeah, fuck that fat fuck. <laughs> We're going to get all of his money. And then you're like, oh, speak of the devil. And then you're like, hello, I'm sick. I can't even, like, do anything. Like, my stomach hurts. I feel sick. Maybe I should get more money. Should I have more money? I know you've given me a lot of money, but maybe I should have more of it. All right. Thank you for all your help. I really, I really appreciate it. Click. That fat fuck thinks I'm sick, but I'm not. I'm faking it, and we're going to steal all of his money. That's kind of what happens. That's really the reality. You know it's the reality. Yep. <laughs> you're not going to see me until January, but then you're going to see us in a brand new studio. How about that? Unless the Minecraft kids come and save us. Let's go work for them. Let's just go work for them. I'd work for Tubbo. Tubbo, Ram, Rambo, you, Rambo. Dude, what if you left this podcast <laughs> to go work for Rambo? Just a British psychopath wearing a mask. Yeah, what if you just... Call, well, I think he has a thing. He whatever has a problem with his own face. Oh, I feel bad looks, now. Oh. Well, it looks fine, but he doesn't think it does. I don't know. It was in the article or whatever. Okay. The point is, I just think if you came to me and you went, listen, I... Um, I've been thinking I really enjoyed what we've built and the time we spent together, but I'm going to work for someone else. And I'm like, who? And you're like, Ranbu. And I'm like, the, ch the child Minecraft streamer? You're like, yes. And I'm like, okay. You win some, you lose some. TimDillaComedy.com. We've only got a few more dates left. Um, yeah. I don't know if these countries are doing a ton of mandates, though. I don't know that they are. I think, you know... I think in those countries, people just want to get vaccinated. Some so of them have to. Some of them aren't doing the mandate. Mm -hmm. Some of them aren't. Um, and now we have, like... I told you I walked in somewhere with my godson in, like, an ice cream parlor, and the woman's like, how old is he? I'm like, he's like one. She's like, oh, at two, they got to wear a mask. It's like, bitch, what are you talking about? Where was this? This was here? Yeah, at an ice cream parlor. There are no long-term contracts or commitments. It is a really easy way to start feeling a bit more peace of mind. Take advantage of Simply Safe's holiday sale. Get 40% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com slash Tim Dillon. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash Tim Dillon for 40% off your entire system. Hurry, this offer ends soon. So here's the Facebook shit. Now, they're changing their name to Meta. Mm -hmm. I'm old enough to remember when Facebook was, you know... College kids trying to get laid. By the way, if Facebook was still functioning like that, we wouldn't need Cool Mom to be driving kids around getting them slammed. But because Facebook is no longer functioning <laughs> as a dating app for children, it is now functioning as a place for elderly people to scream into the void, to post pictures of their dead dogs, to talk about their knee operations, and, and to start, you know, these long threads where people are trying to educate each other on all manner of topics. They, and they think the problem with Facebook is misinformation. All social media is misinformation, whether it's Russia or your mother-in-law. Everybody on Facebook is lying. And so you have a whistleblower, and this bitch comes out, and Facebook is now changing their name to Meta, mm -hmm. which is weird because a restaurant in Long Island I liked did that. Oh, yeah. Still a good restaurant. Mm -hmm. Facebook fails to moderate harmful content in developing countries. What did this whistleblower do? Why is she... What is the big deal here? Basically, she's saying that they're <clears throat> focusing. They, they 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 care more about profit than the safety of their users. So they allow uh, hateful content and hate groups and people like that to spread tons of misinformation that gets people. But killed those and... are their users. Hate groups are your users. Mm. If someone's starting a hate group on your platform, they are a user. Are they not? Quote, Facebook was aware that maids were being sold on its platform. <laughs> Internal documents show that Facebook admitted it was, quote, under-enforcing 
on confirmed abusive activity when it failed to take action after a Filipina maids complained of being abused and sold on the platform, according to the associate. Yeah, we were releasing Saturday, what, 12 a.m. Eastern, right, Ben? That's right, yeah. 12 a.m. Eastern, late, late show. Opposite SNL. <laughs> TimDillonComedy.com if you have any tickets or any questions. Find all of my content now and forever exclusively on Substack. <laughs> Shot herself in the face after she heard the episode. And I feel, so what was that thing on the Legion of Skanks subreddit you read about my stepmother? Oh, supposedly it's like folklore on that subreddit that someone showed up to your stepmother's house and said, hi, I'm a fan of Tim Dillon. And she got really mad. And and what do they get for that clout? I think that's clout. Yeah. Hey, if you want, that's clout saying I'm a fan of Tim. If you want clout, kill her. <laughs> you want real clout? Kill her. I'm kidding. It's the holidays. <laughs> it's the holidays in L.A. and the decorations are out and you can't see them. And if you try to see them, you'll be in. Of the children in the school district of Lee County is close to 2,800 signatures as of Saturday morning. It calls for the 13 and 14 year old boys who are arrested September 9th uh, to be kept out of the schools and suggest they be homeschooled. I think home is the problem. School is also not good. Kill them. The problem isn't where they are physically. The problem is that they exist on Earth. Kill them. <laughs> Truly. You want them at home? Homeschooling is not an option here. Right. They've been homeschooling themselves in fucking guerrilla warfare. Lethal injection, if you want to be kind. You don't have to use old Sparky. Hit them with the needle. <laughs> get it over with. Truly. There should be a program that kills children, and we none of us should have a problem with it. I don't have any problem with it. I have. I will sleep beautifully in this lovely bed I'm in tonight, knowing that those two kids were held down while they were screaming, probably, and tied to a thing. And if you've ever seen Dead Man Walking, yes, in Wisconsin, <laughs> Doctor Eric von Schlossberg. <laughs> Please welcome Dr. Eric von Schlossberg. So you're an anthropologist, but let's yeah. talk about microbiology. No, it'll be a guy. It'll be a guy. It'll be a gym teacher. Can it be a gym teacher? It has to be a guy who's 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 who's, who's like degree is in exercise science. Dr. Eric von Schlossberg from uh, the University of Winnipeg, brutally beaten by four field dykes. <laughs> And is now here to talk about his theory of, you know... Of antimatter. Yeah. Why Galileo was a hack. Dr. Eric von Schlossberg, gym teacher, University of Winnipeg. Let's talk black holes. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, um, they've really opened up their, uh, their fields of interest. Yeah. They really are. Well, everybody, it's the... the like, I, we always thought about doing a sketch was funny where it's like a guy who's like has a mentor who's a professor and, and he sits down with him. And he's like, I, I want to let you know, thank you so much for everything you've done for me. And the professor's like, I'm trying to get on Logan Paul's show. <laughs> and the guy's like, what do you, he goes, he goes like, are you, so are you like working on anything? And he goes, yeah, I'm working on getting on Impulsive. <laughs> Can you get me on impulsive? Yeah. yeah. And you go, well, I thought you were kind of like, weren't you working on a theory? Yeah. Yeah, I'm working on a theory of not being broke. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I got yeah. a new theory called not being broke. Yes. And I'm trying to get my numbers up. Yeah. And he said a lot of valuable things. And we, we like Jordan. We've had yes. Jordan on the show. Um, you but, know, but it's just, it's it's funny because this is a new archetype of guy. The, like, renegade professor, yes, right? renegade professor. Like, back in the day, there were professors who were, like, protesting Vietnam. Yes. And everybody's like, you communist piece of shit. But a lot of them were, like, legit protesting a war in Vietnam. Some of, you know, Chris Hedges gave a great speech during the Iraq war, and he got booed, where he said, this is bad. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be doing this. 
and he was booed and then fired from the New York Times. And I think, I forget, and Ben won't look it up because he's got too much else on his plate, but I'll just keep spouting things whether they're true or not. Chris Hedges uh, fired Iraq war speech. But if you were at Substack, we give you six Bens. Yeah. Yeah, that, that could have been another pitch. We clone Ben and we get three more. Yeah. That's all right. We'll get. We'll find it in an hour. <laughs> do, 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 do. Maybe Substack's right. <laughs> oh yeah, where was it? A rocky commencement at which college? He's not doing it. He knows about it. Tom, ha- yeah, that was a big one. It, Tom Hanks was the big one. Right, right. I checked. I checked. There's no Chrissy Teigen is where I tapped out. Yeah, because like, why? She's not important. I just don't have a high opinion of her. It's like. If you're going to tell me somebody's uh, uh, running a human trafficking ring or they're a satanic cannibal, at least let them be talented. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, at least let them have some kind of fucking talent. Right. Like Michael Jackson, I can believe. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Or You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about Woody. Woody. I was in New York and I was thinking about Woody. I drove by where he lives. I was staying up there in that area on the Upper East Side and. I mean, the guy is just such a chronic, the the way he chronicled Manhattan and New York in a place that we love um, is, you know, he's on his 50th feature. Mm -hmm. The man is 86. And he's going to have to sell it on Louis C.K.'s website. He's selling. (laughs) His new movie is coming out on (laughs) gasdigital.com. SDigitalNetwork.com. Yeah, yeah. It was Jay Gomez. <laughs> <laughs> Woody Allen's new podcast at Gas Digital with Zach Amico. What do you feel about it? Because here's the, the way we come down on it. Is he guilty? Probably. Get this bitch stomped out. American <laughs> History X style. Make her bite the curb. Remember that scene? Bite the curb, curb and then stomp. with the boot? Mm-hmm. Do it to this bitch. I want you to watch her get killed, Zuck. Like Khashoggi was getting tortured and then MBS watched it. Again, allegedly. No issues with them. Allegedly, he was watching it. I want Zuckerberg to watch this woman get killed. Let's see what he has to say. I'm on his side here a little bit. So this is the rebrand with uh, Meta. So this is the sneak peek at the Facebook Metaverse. Now, Meta is going to be a better place to sell the maids. Is that what we're... Because they're creating a world where maids will be sold <laughs> seamlessly. Okay, here we go. I hey. need a maid. Are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. All right, perfect. Hey, <laughs> oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Hi. Mark. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're now, floating here's in the deal. space. Uh, that big creature is the maid. They don't show the real maid because she's bruised and bloody. So what Zuckerberg has done is he has an avatar for his maid so that it disguises the substantial physical damage he's done to her. Continue. This is brilliant. I respect this guy. Mm. And for anyone confused, this is through VR goggles. That's through, like, you know. Right, because the, yeah. if you were to look at it in actuality, you would just see a bleeding <laughs> Filipino maid. Huh? Who made this place? It's awesome. Who made right? this place? The it's maid. It's a crater. I met in L.A. Uh, what happened to the maid? This place is amazing. This is cool. This Boss, is like that VR. You? Of course it's me. Hey, you know I had to be is the there robot a maid? Wasn't there a maid? I, I hear knocking the in the in a, in a uh, wow. garage. What happened I to the maid? I knew you were bluffing. I don't know. I think she got sick. <laughs> hey, wait. The Where's maid the got sick. Let's call her. She's not around anymore. Stop asking questions about the fucking maid. Hey, should we deal you in? Sorry, I'm running late, but you've got to see what we're checking out. There's an artist going around Soho hiding AR pieces for people to find. Wow. 3D street there's art. Some, there's some. There's cool. people in the Philippines going around okay, hiding so maids. Are you guys up on that or no? Or are you just is, concerned about the, the awesome. wow. augmented reality? Wait, it's, it's How about the actual reality where maids are getting beaten Hold to death on, on your website? It. Does anyone wow. concern with that or not? If you guys like or it here, because you guys can't uh, decode the, the Filipino language. Huh, let's see. This is like after 9-11 when they're like, the CIA doesn't understand Arabic. I'm like, no, they understand it fine when they plan the attack. Hey, um, I'm going to go through this report in a minute, but guys... What do you think this is, you know? You think we make it out? 
You think we're, we're, you think there's a society on the other end of this? I don't know how to farm. <laughs> I mean, fuck, man. My wife coughed the other day. I thought about not letting her in my house. I love her, but I, you know, I got to think about myself. I'm in survival mode. Man, I don't know how I'm going to provide for my kids. Fuck. All right. Well, anyway, the new product guidelines that I received seem to be pretty positive. The client enjoys the packaging, you know. I mean, how do you just, how, it's like doom every day, and then you just got to get on a Zoom meeting and yeah. pretend that uh, everything's okay. And you're just sitting there. You just came all over yourself. You just <laughs> masturbated for 30 minutes. And I mean, you really got into it. And now it's a Zoom meeting, and you got to sit there covered in cum. And, like, look at everyone that you used to work with, and they're all covered in their own cum. I mean, manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping. It's all good. Goodbye. That's a lot of what. But I'll tell you one thing about Dino Jr., the bodybuilder. He's no joke. You know? Now, here's the thing about Long Island. The parents on either side of that house, they're going to be well-behaved. They're going to be well-behaved. If this was as shocking as people say it was, that means that there's other families in that area that are like, fuck, it could happen to anybody. Anybody could get it at any time. Now, this woman ran a dance school. I do not want to be... I'm not even trying to make light of this. It is my shitty job. Occasionally, I may say some things that are... Uh, but it is a story that I'm fascinated by. Because I wish to God... I pray... I truly wish... I'd, I, I had the strength to kill my parents. But I didn't. Because I'm weak. I'll admit that to the people listening. I'm weak. I never killed them. They slept in separate bedrooms. I'd have to cap one and cap the other. It was a whole thing. Do they do a... A, if she survives, and we hope she does. Does the dance school do a number to, for her to celebrate her life? What's it called in Limbrook Stars? Limbrook uh, Stars with a Z, yeah. Yeah, well, there are no stars in Limbrook, but perhaps they will do the right thing, which is honor this woman's legacy with a dance number. And the number will be to honor... Her life, you know, which we hope she still has. And I'm just saying, I hope that happens sooner rather than later. The dad and the grandfather have a pretty uh, sketchy record here. What do you mean? <clears throat> well, the dad and the grandfather. Am I going to get shot for talking about this? this seems Why don't to... you protect me? You can always edit it out later, but since the dad and grandfather were arrested for operating an illegal waste site next to their company's Brooklyn headquarters in 97, and that year that company pleaded guilty to filing fake documents related to a project at Elmhurst Hospital Center in Queens. Uh, it said they had a $2.5 million contract to build concrete decking for a new wing at the hospital and had secretly and illegally subcontracted the work to a second company for $1.4 million, enabling them to collect a $1 million profit, the Times reported. The scheme came to light after they failed to pay the second company. Wow. Yeah, they're criminals. In the same article, the Atler reported that the company was indicted for racketeering in 1987 for bribing local officials to let them illegally dump construction waste in Jersey. They eventually got off when they paid a $25,000 fine. So Nobody deserves to get shot in the face on Christmas. I don't care what they did. You tell me their own son whacked them? How do we know that little Dino did it? 
uh, the police arrested him because he was he was fleeing the scene. But I, I, you make a good point here. We don't have any video. Maybe he was going to work out. Did they ever think about that? No, I'm dead serious. Maybe little Dino was stressed out and he wanted to go work out. Well, we have his Instagram here, right? So here's... Do we? Let's get into his head a little bit Let's here. get into his head. Okay, so of course it's... Hey! I'm, I'm Dino. You're in my fucking head now. Fucking traffic. So it's a photo Ugh. of... Here's, we submit this to the court here. This is the picture of him sitting in the car. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. Take a look at this. I have a hot take. I have a hot take. I actually like candy corn. I do too! Yeah. I do too! I do too! I do too! I do too! Me too! That's so funny. I'm too scared to say it. You're also it. dressed the... like a candy corn. <laughs> it's so controversial to say these if days. If you say that you like candy corn, people will like walk That's away. so funny. I just said that yesterday and I was like, I, it tastes like buttery syrup to me, like I, Mrs. Buttersworth. Melts in your mouth and has like a little crust on the outside anyway. Dude, I, I'm not kidding. I wrote out a tweet that said, guys, I kind of like candy corn, and I deleted it, I, or I, I backspaced on it because I was like too controversial. Canceled. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, not oh anymore. God. Please stop not that. Any Please stop that. Don't you see my point now that if Chrissy Teigen was eating children, it would be the coolest thing about her? <laughs> like, don't you get it now? Don't you understand that a lot of this QAnon shit makes these people look cooler than they are? Like, oh, yeah, she's some, like, high priestess of the satanic religion. She's like a dumb, trash bitch who somehow figured out a way to get famous. And she's sitting with Whitney talking about candy corn. I mean, you know, God bless Whitney. Uh, that Wendy Williams, what a, what a woof. That was a <laughs> big disaster. <laughs> That week, and we love Whitney, but that week was a very large disaster. Uh, Whitney subbing in for Wendy Williams, who's, I believe, in rehab or something. Something like that, yeah. Or, and I don't... Uh, you make a good point here. We don't have any video. Maybe he was going to work out. Did they ever think about that? No, I'm dead serious. Maybe little Dino was stressed out, and he wanted to go work out. Well, we have his Instagram here, right? So here's... Do we? Let's get into his head a little bit Let's here. get into his head. Okay, so, of course it's... Hey! I'm, I'm Dino. You're in my fucking head now. Fucking traffic. So it's a photo Ugh. of... Here's, we submit this to the court here. This is the picture of him sitting in the car, kind of looking ahead with his watch. Yeah. And the caption says, don't bleed on someone who didn't cut you. And then he has the prayer hands and then the 100. And then he says, dinner to the aftermath. Much appreciated. Much respect. Hashtag thank you. Hashtag New York City. Hashtag New York. Hashtag stay focused. Hashtag fitness. Hashtag fashion. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag grateful. I don't think he did it. I don't think he did it. <laughs> I want to come out and support him right now. I don't believe he did it. He's being framed. I'm dead serious. I, I think he's being framed by a gangland uh, connection. Okay. I believe he's being framed. Hashtag blessed. I don't think he did it. I don't think he did it. I think he's too much of a pussy. I think he's too much of a pussy to shoot his mother in the head. <laughs> I know a lot of people who said they were going to kill their parents on Long Island, and none of them did. You know why? Because we live, because we have the worst generation ever of people that got participation trophies. We got soft snowflakes. None of them raised a hand to their parents. Well, we wish, we wish uh, Dino the best. I don't think he did it, and I will support him. And I will, the full power of the show will be uh, to support him. Well, his Instagram's still up. I just texted you a link if you want to follow him or support him or anything like that. Let's see. Are there any comments on the post? I can't believe the police haven't taken this down yet in Long Island. They should have taken this no, down. No, no. Leave it up. Iron Bros. 
Oh, somebody wrote, Bubba's going to love those muscles at Rikers Island. Those killer shoes are just good comedy two hours ago. 16 minutes ago, must be the steroids. Insta blue check goes, DM me to get your blue check. <laughs> okay. Somebody goes, are you the one who tried to kill your parents? I guess those steroids got to your head. Somebody writes, bro, I know a good criminal defense lawyer. DM me. That's the best. That's my favorite one so far. Long Island's all about getting the hookup, you know? Mm -hmm. Yo, bro, I know a good lawyer. DM me. Bro, listen, dude. Don't fucking worry about nothing. You shot your dad in the back, <laughs> and you shot your mom in the head on Christmas Day. You need a lawyer, bro. You need a good lawyer. Yo, I know a good lawyer. And then he'll talk about it like he'll go out, you know, for dinner, and he'll be like, yo, my boy, dude, he got in some shit. He shot his mother in the head. <laughs> And his father in the back, Christmas morning. Dude, he only did 20 years because I got him that good lawyer. <laughs> Dude, 20 years for that? That's not bad. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but this is, you know, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate uh, cycle of violence. Magic Spoon cereal is one of my favorites. You know why? Because it's there's no sugar. It's beautiful. They use high quality sweeteners like monk fruit and zevia. Magic Spoon is amazing. You can custom design your own pack of different flavors. Magic Spoon is keto friendly, gluten free. It's got like no sugar. It's high in protein. It's a really great cereal, especially if you like sugar cereals the type uh, that you ate when you were a child. Magic Spoon allows you to feel a bit naughty, but actually you're being nice, right? That's right. Right. We have been so successful uh, with Magic Spoon as a company because people like their product and they order it over and over again. I love Magic Spoon. I love the fruity flavor because it tastes exactly like Fruit Loops, but you don't have to. F I want to help. Okay? That's all. I think we could join the two protest groups the people that want to open everything up and the people that want to burn everything down. I have a solution. Let's open it up, let's eat, and then let's burn it down. <laughs> That is a solution. I can bring both sides of this country together. Let's open it up. Let's get a Tostado Nachos. Let's get a three for all. Let's get a Jack Daniels whiskey glazed chicken sandwich. Let's get a brownie obsession. And then when they say, here's the check, go, no, here's the check. <laughs> and burn it the fuck down. But let's have a meal first. Let's have a meal. Absolutely has to stop. There should never be a no-knock warrant issued in this country ever again. I mean... There, there should not. I mean, Derek Chauvin should be killed in prison so he doesn't go to trial. I'm calling for his murder. <laughs> I'm calling for a Mossad op to kill him, so he doesn't go to trial. Maybe twelve because I think the, the the law is not. He might get off. I'm saying get gut and get him. I, what's more progressive than that? But I don't understand what going into a restaurant. And screaming in people's faces and attacking them. You create this binary of there's Joe Biden and the people that seem to support him. A lot of them, you know, not a lot of them percentage wise, but in terms of what the media is showing you are doing those things. And then on the other side of the equation, you have Donald Trump who says law and order and you get to go out to dinner without being attacked. And by the way, I don't think you want voters walking into a voting booth with that binary equation in their mind. I tweeted the other day. I said, if this is the strategy, maybe Trump should win. And what I mean by that, you look at the words there, it's like the strategy. If that's what you think is going to win, then, then Trump should win. Because what he's doing is, is essentially positioning himself as the candidate of let's have a society. Let's have a civilization. 
And again, I've I've articulated that I think Trump is a con artist, and I've articulated it on on platforms much bigger than this. And I think I've probably I've probably nailed Trump and what he is more than most people talking about him. And the ones that truly the ones that he keeps up at night seem to never get what he is. They call him a Cheeto. They call him an orange man. They, they their whole uh, contribution uh, to the body politic here is to is is to say that his hands are small. That's what they've been running with for the last two years. No, I think I I think I've done a pretty accurate appraisal on who Donald Trump is, having obviously never met him and not really knowing that many people that are really close to him. But knowing that if he positions himself successfully as the candidate of listen. There are problems, but we want to live in a civil society. There's a very good chance he wins. And by the way, he has no problem with using authoritarian, uh, you know, authoritarianism. We know that. We know that. So I don't, I'm not saying that he's going to be correct when he says I'm the candidate of civilization. I'm saying it will look that way. And it, it, it's really created this. Uh, I, I don't understand why the media and 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 uh, powerful institutions across this country think that anything good or productive will come out of random violence and and chaos that will reign. Thinking that will something will emerge from that that is a coherent governing philosophy that can be implemented is crazy. No one believes that. They just believe that they don't want to lose their job and they don't want to lose money and they don't want to be called a racist and that's what they believe. But no, I don't believe that many people truly believe that you're going to draw a line from what we're seeing right now, which is random acts of violence perpetrated against innocent people in the name of something that you expect will be better, in the name of justice. or People are wearing shirts on Instagram, revolution shirts. You cut it out. What revolution has a has merch? I mean, so what is the show, exactly? dude? There might have been a high level Illuminati meeting in Hollywood that said, "Listen, if Trump's not reelected, we have nothing." <laughs> I mean, dude, there. I'm not even fucking kidding. There might have been a high level Illuminati meeting in Hollywood where they went, "Everything has gone up since he's been elected," mm. and everything was failing before that, including Twitter, SNL. Uh, news programs, comedy programs, lots of our late night shows, Colbert, lots of our landmark properties. They've all grown tremendously in the era of Trump. He cannot lose. If Biden comes in, we're fucked. We need Trump to win. And they're all sitting there and they're, you know, in some, some Bel Air mansion. They're all sitting there. They're smoking cigars or whatever. And they're, they're looking at each other and they're like, how do we, how do we guarantee that Trump wins again and they go, what if, what if there was a show where Raven Simone talked about coronavirus from a mansion with like Rob Lowe and, and Master P and just celebrities? Like they were like, what if every week we went to a celebrity's home, an estate, and then filmed them on their couch discussing the news of the day? And they're all like, they're all kind of like in a sniffers of brandy. They're like, this is kind of a good idea. They're like, but we need them to talk about more than pop culture. Like they have to talk about the news. Yes. And then one guy goes, and they don't know anything about the news, but they'll have a bunch of offensive opinions. You go, yes. And we need them without any of their handlers. We, we, we can't really be scripted. They need to have just crazy off the cuff takes that half make sense. They have to be annoyingly liberal and completely out of touch. And if we do that week after week, we can pretty much guarantee that Donald walks right back into that office and we sit right back. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, I know this is conspiracy thinking, but I'm not that wrong. This doesn't make sense. Right. This show does not make sense. This is crazy. This is genuinely crazy. And something is behind this. If it's a brilliant Republican mole mm. in fucking one of these networks... Bravo. Hats off. Because I didn't even see the show yet. I read the description of The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm about to give I'm about to take all the money out of my bank account and give it to Candace Owens. I'm about to give the money and sponsor a Candace Owens goes on tour calling the virus fake. After after seeing this fucking thing. 
They don't learn these people. They don't learn. Bush, George W. Bush learned. He paints silently in his house in Texas. And he just chills. And every now and then he pops up with Ellen somewhere at a, at a, you know, a football stadium, you know, while he's passing a message along to her from whatever the fuck those two are involved in. I mean, I'm telling you right now, folks, something real weird about a show like that. It's kind of interesting. TV is not at the heart of anyone's fucking life. Can you stop the fabric of their life? It's not. Everybody's online now. Everybody watches everything on fucking YouTube. Yes, occasionally people watch The Masked Singer and shows like that. Yes, TV has more resonance than I would expect in middle America. But the majority of people are, are, are online. It's very funny to think about. It's very, very interesting, you know? But, you know, we move on. We, we move on, folks, to, to bigger and better things, to greater things, you know? We will, we will all make it through this. And by all of us, I mean 18% of us, roughly, 18 to 20%. We can't really tease the thing we're going to maybe launch, right? We can't do that? No. No. Okay. Good. You are doing keto and you like cereal and you love my show and you want to support it. This is the way to do it. Listen, people that have female audiences make millions and trillions of dollars podcasting. I have an audience mainly of men because I'm talking sense. But the problem with men is that they don't. <laughs> You know, I'm not recapping the Real Housewives or whatever else you uh, ladies are into. It's amazing to get, it's like gay, it's like everyone's like, oh, you're going to be gay, and then you have to be around a lot of women. It's like, wait, what? Um, I'm kidding. I have a very much respect for the ladies out there, and I love you, and I want more of you to listen, and I want you to buy the fucking products. Okay? That's what I really want to happen. I have a male audience. It's not my fault. It's the way it shook out. But the women who do listen to me are special women. They are bosses. They are gangsters. They run businesses. They are prostitutes. They are sex slaves. They are drug addicts. <laughs> they give themselves abortions. <laughs> They are QAnon. <laughs> They're trying to steal people's children they think were kidnapped by <laughs> sex cults. They are. They have QAnon tattooed on their pussy. These are special ladies. They think they were abducted and fucked by George Soros. <laughs> the women that connect with my material have been to prison, not jail, prison. They've done a stretch or two. They've <laughs> killed their parents or their children or both. The women that connect to my show are special women. They've thought about hiring someone to kill their husband. They've thought about it. They've never done it, but they've thought about it. They sit in that suburban hell they've created for themselves, and they hear my voice, and they hear it as the voice of freedom, and they think, what would I have to do to just get this stupid lug out of my life and go do something that really speaks to my soul? And to them, I'm saying go to magicspoon.com. Slash Tim Dillon to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code Tim Dillon, my name, T I M D I L L O N, because I want to make lots of money and I need the women to do it because men are stupid apparently and don't fucking buy anything and just binge free content because they think they've all got it figured out. You haven't got it figured out. You're nothing out there, men. I need women. I want an audience of 5,000 women. Bitches <laughs> that just buy my shit. This show might turn around and be straight up catered to the fucking hoes. I might come on the show and be like, I'm your ho. That's where we're going. If you start buying Magic Spoon cereal, I'll do the show in fucking drag and I'll talk about whatever horse shit you want me to talk about. The Bachelor, Avocado Toast, cleaning out your asshole, whatever you want, I'm in. I'll do it. I don't have to blabber about the CIA to these broke fucks all the time. Who cares? These retards who go in their backyard and shoot at their tree. These fucking militiamen or wherever the fuck's listening. We'll get them out of here. We'll dump them on the side of the fucking road. 
I want bitches that spend money, Instagram influencers, basic bitches that spend. It's you who this ad is for. You are the ones that need to stay attractive. And you know why? Because the world is unfair and there's beauty standards and all of that shit that I'll talk more about if you buy the Magic Spoon cereal. And if I find out you're not buying it, I will have no choice but to keep doing what I've kind of been doing, which is steer the content to more of a male domain, more of a kind of thinking-based show. It's a joke. It's funny because it's not true. Men are retarded. Women are retarded. Everyone's stupid. I forgot this isn't. Is this an ad still? <laughs> They're going to believe these people. I don't care. It's good cereal. Buy the cereal. I'm not, I'm not kidding anymore about this. I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to kill your family if you don't buy the cereal. I swear to God, I'll select one of you at random. I'll come to your fucking house and I'll blow my brains out in front of you. And every day for the rest of your life, you'll see the gun going into my fat mouth as I blow my head off in front of you if you do not buy this fucking cereal. Okay? Celebrity kid from Ozark, whose name I won't mention, buy the fucking cereal, okay? You better stay thin. You know, you play that white trash, whatever it is. They want you to be thin. You can't plump up. Don't get fat. It's all over for you. Buy the fucking cereal. Everybody listening, buy the cereal. Ryan Philippi, if he still listens to this fucking show, buy the cereal, please. Buy the cereal. You're getting, you're getting older. You keep in great shape. I, we get it. You run. It's fine. Buy the cereal, magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. And God help you if you buy this fucking cereal and you don't use the promo Tim Dillon. If you buy the cereal and you do not use the promo code, I swear to God, I will drive L.A. homeless corona patients to your fucking house and I will let them in your back door and they will cough on all of your shit while you're out. Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. Use the code Tim Dillon for free shipping. And a big thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring us. Cereal. I want to get the ads going. That's my point here. Patreon's great, but we got to get the ads going. You know, you know why all the big podcasts in LA don't have Patreons? Because they have, and I'll always do a Patreon because I always want to do content. That I like the idea of Patreon. It's five bucks, you get four hours. It's fucking, it's good. It's real deal shit. It, you're not getting fucked over. I've sold a lot of bad products in my life. Subprime mortgages, copier machines. It didn't work and I'll do it again. But the point is that the Patreon's actually a good deal. But a lot of these big podcasts in LA, they don't need that because everybody buys the shit. So just buy the shit, please. I'm not going to get less funny. I know, you know what I mean? I'm not going to get, I think some of you think I'm going to get less funny when I, when I, when I like have a home, when I can afford a house, here's what's going to happen. If I can't afford a house, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill all of you. I'll find a way to kill all of you. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll figure out a fucking way. I'll kill every last one of you. I'll kill my whole audience. What's going on with this vaccine? These motherfuckers. No. You pull something up here about the vaccine. What are we doing? What is what is the vaccine here? I was fucking around in the kitchen. I think I got something with a little white wine vinegar and something. I'm going to call the CDC tomorrow, see if we can start a trial. I was fucking around with a little extra virgin olive oil, a little white wine vinegar. I think we could kind of do it. We've we've topped over 50,000 deaths. It's a fucking ugly thing, man. Not easy. You're dealing with a... Me and, and more and more people are going crazy every day. More and more people are losing their minds. So we've just got a bad situation where the culture pushes more and more people off the cliff and then those people then turn around and start committing acts of violence because they are insane. A culture of horrible food, prescription drugs, an over-medicated and under-medicated, both, culture of people that are self-medicating, a culture of high levels of stress, work till you drop dead, no health care, no intervention, early intervention mm -hmm. when people are having these mental health problems, a culture that prides itself on like hustle and grind and fucking figure it out, man. You just gotta tough your way through it. 
it pushes people off a cliff. And then those people are going to end up in American cities, insane, and they're going to kill you. Perhaps that should make you think twice about what we've set up here. Mm. A system that is designed so that a fair amount of people every year are going to become homeless, they're going to lose benefits, and whatever mental health issue they have is going to be exacerbated by poverty, Mm -hmm. those people are going to end up in very desperate situations. Some of them, not all of them, some of them are going to lose their minds and they're going to strike out and do and you're going to see more and more acts of domestic terrorism you know you'll see these people who are desperate they have nothing to lose they're going to pick up arms i mean and i don't know if, you know i don't know what this had to do with because it was a there was a, a a legendary Mexican guy that died yes. in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and a guy just started shooting out of his window. We had the Waukesha massacre, mm. where that SUV that was not being driven, it was a self-driving SUV, killed all those people. But no, it was a, it was a black guy that was steeped in anti-white kind of racist language right yeah it's not the mainstream narrative really no the mainstream narrative is a car decided to mow over children in uh, wisconsin but there was a guy who was like very from what i know Mm -hmm. seemed to be a you know a radical and the ideology that radicalized him Mm -hmm. was an ideology that was kind of like hey it was dehumanizing to, like, white people. Right. Like, white people are all out to get you, trying to kill you, evil. And, well, if you say that about any group of people and somebody believes it, they're going to do horrible things like drive a car through a parade. Now, it is not popular with the media because the media likes to play footsie every now and then with that ideology as well because it's fun. It revs everyone up. It gets some clicks. Just like they did after 9-11, where it was Muslims that they were talking about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they would have all these pieces about Islam and this and that. And, you know, there were radicals that were white people that would then go and commit acts. Not a ton of them, but there was a few people that would then commit like anti-Muslim hate crimes anti-Chinese hate crimes, whatever. Why wouldn't you have an anti-white hate crime, right? Like, why wouldn't you have that if the person is being motivated by that? The idea, I guess, is that the media doesn't think that's real or maybe doesn't think that they've ever stoked that type of feeling ever or maybe they don't think that it's a widespread enough, which I don't think it's widespread. Mm. I don't think it's an epidemic. Right. But I don't think hate crimes against anyone are an epidemic when you look at the numbers. They're just not happening in mass. They're just not. But this guy... It showed he had praised Hitler, backed Black Lives Matter, and called for violence against white people. So the mainstream narrative, they don't want to discredit, you know, BLM and stuff like that. So they kind of just... It feels like they kind of just back off of it a little bit. It's very hard for the alt-right because it's like, fuck white people, and then he praises Hitler, and they're like, well... (laughs) Well, this is tough. This is tough. But you're going to see that more and more, right? Mm. Because people are mentally ill. Yeah. They're being let out on bail. These bail rules are interesting. And, you know, I don't think people like Khalif Browder, who can't make bail, should die in Rikers Island because he stole a backpack. Right. But, you know, what did this guy do? He, he tried to murder his uh, wife? He ran or? over his ex-wife previously, yeah. And then how long? He's also a pedophile. And then he was out of jail when? In a few days? Yeah, uh, a cash bail of $1,000. That might be a little light for running over the wife. He had allegedly punched the mother of his child in the face early last month and then drove over her, leaving tire marks on her leg. $1,000 for driving over a woman? 
seems light. To be honest, just from a purely financial standpoint, mm-hmm. a G, like you ran over what? Listen, punching her in the face all day. That's a G. That's a G. Punch her in the face. You're out with a G. I'm for that. She's popping off. You're popping off. Things get heavy. Mm-hmm. One pop. You don't break her nose. You don't do anything like that. You hit her once. Again, I am not for that, but I understand 1000 bucks a G. Hey. But if you run her over with a car, that has to be at least $3,000, right? Yeah. If you run over the mother of your child with a car, you should have to pay at least $3,000 to get out of jail and do it again. If you really want to run over the woman, uh, the mother of your child again <laughs> with a car, it should cost you $3,000 at minimum. And the problem with not paying these low bail numbers is that people get out and they do it again. Mm-hmm. And this guy, this demon, went and killed a bunch of people in Wisconsin. And people that will listen to this, they'll go, no, well, the bail system's unfair. It may be unfair. It's also unfair to be walking in a Christmas parade and get slaughtered by a maniac in his car. That is also unfair. So in between those two extremes, you'd want to create a system that makes it harder for a violent psychopath to go back out and do the thing. He just did it. He yeah. just ran over somebody mm-hmm. with a car. Five days previous. Five days ago. Mm-hmm. No, you don't understand. Again, are these polit- am I having political? Is this a political ideology I'm espousing? I'm just talking like a human being would talk. And you people impose your politics on it because you're insane. But I'm having a discussion like I would talk to anybody going, yeah, I get it. People getting thrown in debtor's prison or whatever, the equivalent of that over parking tickets is fucking absurd. That's no good. Guy who runs over a woman with his car being let out immediately on a a bail of a G goes and does, uh, you commits an act of terrorism a week later. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. Figure that out. It's not political. I don't think the idea that you don't want people climbing in your house to kill you is a political statement. If you say I'm against people climbing over my uh, fence and breaking into my house to kill me, I don't go, oh, yeah, you must be a right-wing nut. That's not political to me. Those are not political statements, you know? Mm -hmm. I'd rather my family not get murdered. I don't turn around and go, must be a libertarian. I just go, oh, it's a father or a mother who doesn't want their family uh, to experience a home invasion. And this is why the Democrats are going to lose again, because the idea that this shit is in any way political and isn't just rational is crazy. It's not political to want to preserve the safety of yourself and the people you care about to the extent that you can. 